I received a very interesting question on my way here. The passenger next seat, after exchanging some good stories about our challenging childhood, asked me, if you had the power to go back in time and relive the days that you already lived, would you live them in the same way you lived it before, or would you change something about them? The answer was very clear, very easy in my head. I know exactly what to say. But firstly, give me the chance to tell you three brief stories to help you understand my answer. When I was 13 years old, I, I fell in love with a girl who was sitting in the school seat in front of me in the classroom. The most beautiful girl you could ever imagine. You know, the way she walks, the way she looks, the way she moves, the way she is, her eyes, her nose, her mouth, the collection of her was extremely beautiful. Every detail, every feeling I, I see when I, what I feel when I look at her was fabulous. But I was shy. I never dared to look any, any girl in the eye, you know, I didn't dare. I was so shy. But I, I won't let that stop me from telling her that I love her. So one day, I was courageous enough to take a pen and a paper to write her a letter. So I wrote the first initial of my name, O, and the first initial of her name, H, and a heart in the middle. I thought that was the best thing I could ever do, the most romantic, the most beautiful thing. And she will fall in love the minute she opens that paper. And I left it on her seat, and I went back to the corner to hide, to see when she comes back from the break. She comes, and she comes closely, slowly to the seat, and she gets the paper, open it in her hands, and, and she opens it like this, and... That's the moment where I would shine. That's the moment when she's supposed to smile and be happy and very and fall in love with me. She opens that paper and they tears it apart, throw it in the trash. It's very funny to say it today. It was heartbreaking at that moment. My heart was thrown in the trash. Every feeling I had for her was thrown in the trash. I didn't know what to do. So when I go back home, when I go back home, I have to think about anything but her, but I can't think about anything but her. I sit there in my room. My mom calls for me. I can't. I'm busy. I'm studying. I can't study. I can't do anything except thinking about the fact that she rejected me. But the day after, I can't give up, so I write another letter. Take the pen, the paper, and I write my first initial O, first initial H, and a heart in the middle. But this time, I perfume it. <laughs> it smells lovely. And I hide at the same corner, and she comes. She takes the paper, smells it, it smells fantastic, tear it apart, throw it in the trash. The beauty of the smell doesn't matter. So when I, I, I don't know what to do. I get frustrated to go back home. I'm angry. I want to punch things. I don't know what to do. How can I get that love that I, that I want to get? But I tried once, twice. And if that means something, it means that I can try three times, five times, ten times, hundred times. I can try forever until I got what I want, until I get that love that I felt like I deserved. And one day, I decided this letter is going to be fabulous. So I took the pen and a paper, and I wrote my first initial, her first initial, and a heart in the middle. But I colored it very lovely with a different perfume, a girl perfume that smelled fantastic. And I left it on the seat. I knew she would take it through it in the trash, but it doesn't matter. As long as I have some hope, she will get that. And she comes to the, from the break, and she takes the paper, smells it nice. And in my head, the picture is playing faster than what she's doing. So I imagine her throwing it in the trash, but she comes to take the paper, and she smiles. And she takes it, put it in her pocket. 
And if that means something, it means that she loves me. And every minute, and every move, and everything about it, she loves everything about me. That's what my brain was telling me at that moment. If she takes that letter, she loves me so much. And two years has already passed since the first letter. It's not the first time. And when she actually told me that she loved me in her own letter that she wrote to me, I received a phone call from my cousin with the name Bashir. Bashir called me and said, Omar, things are getting really wild downtown. you got to come to this city. And if there's one thing that I loved more than that girl, it's wildness, crazy things. I went to the city and that was on the street, thousands of people all jumping, freedom, freedom, freedom. I didn't know what freedom meant at that time. It doesn't matter. The girl I want loves me. That all that matters, you know? So being in a protest with thousands of people was not about freedom for me or politics or, or democracy. It meant about a collection of nice people enjoying their time. They're having a good party, you know, good music and good food and so on. And flowers, everybody has a rose. When you come to the protest, they give you a flower. So I would take this flower. The best thought that comes to my mind, ah, this is a nice, expensive flower. I will take it with me to give it to her tomorrow. That was among the most meaningful thing of this protest for me when I was 15 years old. The only disturbing thing in this protest, though, was that on the other side of their protest, there was soldiers holding their guns. And an officer walking in front of them, slowly, step by step. And suddenly, while you are in the middle of the protest, the officer screamed, Load! They're loading all these guns. Aim! They're aiming at the people. And when it gets super, super quiet and you don't hear anything anymore, poof, 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 poof. And they start shooting people. And you've never seen, i never seen people dying before. i never seen a friend dying before. And suddenly, there's so much blood on the ground. I've never seen the blood smoking. It's the first time in my life. Everything is so scary. What's going to happen next? Everybody is screaming, Omar, run away, run away. But I can't. I'm freezing. I don't know what to do. I've never seen that before. I've only seen it in movies. I don't know what, how to react. And people are screaming, Omar, run away. I can't. And the soldiers are coming towards me quickly and I can't move and they come and they put their hands on me, put me on the ground, start jumping over my body like this, hurting me badly. They take me to prison and they torture me. I was 15 years old. I never understood the word of torture until I experienced torture myself. And when I was in the most painful moments, I realized there's no more a place for love. It seems like I will die very soon. I thought I will die at that moment, but I survived. I was released, and I had the chance to go back to my habit of writing letters. I took the pen, I took the paper, my first initial, my first initial, and a heart in the middle, and a few words. Hey, you know that I, I love you. I love everything about you. And I will always love you. But I know that I will die. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt me and you. So I would rather not talk anymore, not write letters anymore, because I will dedicate my life to go to the street to ask for freedom and dignity for democracy because I can't let monsters who can't torture children be in power in my country. I have to do something about it. I have to dedicate my life for something so meaningful. I can't spend all my thought thinking about you day and night all the time. I have to do something that has more meaning for me, for my family, for my country, for everyone. And I sent that letter. And then she started to send me letters back. I never opened them. Take them, burn them. 
sometimes crying, sometimes laughing, sometimes feeling nothing. And one day, I turned 17. As soon as I turned 17, the intelligence services of my country attacked my home, and they took me to prison again. This time was different. I didn't spend one month or two months in prison. I didn't spend one year. I spent three years, between 17 and 20. Painful moments when you see the ones you love dying slowly next to you. You can only hold them and touch them and whisper to them comforting words when they are dying, talking to them about beautiful memories. When my beloved cousin Bashir, who called me to go to the protest, was dying in my hands, I could do nothing but rem remember the beautiful moments we had together when we actually tamed the first bird together and built the first greenhouse together. And when I told him that that girl loves me, but then he dies. Then the guards come, laughing, enjoying their day, telling me, hey, we did a massacre in your town and we killed your family. You have nothing to live for. So they wanted to kill the hope that I had. They want to kill everything I have outside and everything I have inside, so I have nothing to live for. And when you, in a place like that, when you see nothing but darkness, nothing but pain, you realize there is no place for love. Six months passed, and in these six months, I was remembering her face, her nose, the way she moves, the way she walks your life, the way she smiles. But slowly, her image started to fade away from my head. I can't imagine her picture anymore. I don't remember how her perfume smelled, how the first letter looked like when I sent it. I started to lose my memory slowly, 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 believing that I will die. So when the passenger next to me asked me this question, if you had the power to go back in time and live your life again, would you live your days the same way you lived them before, or would you change something about them? Of course, the answer was no. I would never change something about what I went through. I would live my days exactly the way they happened. Because if I did not suffer until she loved me, Writing the first letter and the second letter, the joy would have never been the same joy when she took the first letter and put it in her pocket. Would never been the same joy. If I didn't go to prison and was tortured and suffered, I would have never had the chance to build the personality I have today, become the person I am today. Life is not easy. Most of our life is not beautiful moments. Most of what we go through is challenging, stressful, sometimes painful, physically and mentally. And then there is the beautiful moments. They are not the majority of your life. So if you or I wish to be only the collection of the beautiful moments of our life, you will be half a person or less. You would be half of what you can become. You will be limiting yourself. Life does not always offer a way out. Sometimes the only way is through, through pain, through suffering, through hardship and challenges, you become who you are today. So if I am to summarize my entire speech in one sentence, it would be, if you want, a per if you want to be a person that you will be proud to present to the world, you have to learn one thing, and that's embracing pain as much as you embrace joy. Thank you.